we build too many walls. Man, we don't build enough bridges. From Sir Isaac Newton himself, let's get this show on the road. Man, ever since I was but a wee little lad, I've absolutely loved to build things. From spiraling matchstick structures here, I tell you, that made my parents raise their eyebrows right there, over to strange looking block monoliths, to the fan favorite wobbling towers, which rely over the top over at any moment. Man, I just couldn't keep my hands from moving. I loved to build things, and nothing brought me more joy to construct than bridges. Man, I'd build them out of absolutely, absolutely anything, from modeling clay to pencils to even staples and string at time. You could not keep me away from a bridge. There's something about these structures, such Goliath entities that hold themselves with such elegance and grace. I mean, just look at this one here. It's absolutely enormous. Look at that. Yet, it's holding itself like it's floating on air. I distinctly remember the first time I saw my first bridge, and I, ju I just thought to myself, I knew in my heart of hearts that I had to build one for myself. But tragically, I would soon come to find that modeling clay and string don't make very durable construction materials. So the hunt was on to find something that would. Now, how many of you in this audience here have ever played with Legos before? Man, look at those hands fly up into the sky. That's pretty zesty right there. What about, uh, I don't know, Lincoln Logs, Erector Sets, Tinker Toys, something like that? Ooh, equally zesty. The tangy flavors arise from within. Now, what about Connects? Anyone for Connects? I see a few hands. Well, this, this right here, these are Connects, and man, they're pretty zesty. They're kind of like Legos. You click them together to build large structures. But unlike Legos, which are bricks, Connects are rods and connectors here, perfect for making large, durable, skeletal structures, vast in scale. And if you can't already tell, I, I tend to work in vast scales, a little over the top. So we'll, we'll just place that right there for now. Um, man, the moment I discovered Connects, I just knew I had to get my hands on some. So little me pleading on his knees, just begging my parents, when can I get some Connects of my own? And sure enough, come Christmas time, I came darting downstairs to find a box of connects simmering under the tree, just begging for me to build with. Man, so building I went. And I built and 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 built until I'd run out of literal space. Look at that. For context, this is our kitchen door. It, it could not be opened after that. Um, <laughs> another eyebrow raising a situation right there. All that being said, though, I built my first bridge, a suspension bridge about 20 feet in length. I'd used every connect in my possession, and boy, it felt great. I even took my mom's yoga mat and cut it up to make a roadway. <laughs> Another eyebrow raise right there. Slightly frowned upon, but that's okay. I made up for it with Christmas lights. You know, all that being said, as I said before, I tend to like to outdo myself. I work in the extreme. So the moment this bridge was done, the moment I completed my creation here, I knew, man, I had to build one that was bigger. But tragically, those dreams would have to remain just that, dreams. The prospects of high school, then college were on the horizon. Man, I had more important things to do. And even though my heart longed to build, my mind told me I'd have to wait for another time. And so the first timeline ends, and we fast forward, woo, jumping ahead to junior year. I'm now in Greenville, South Carolina at the opulently beautiful Furman University. Man, I'd found my stride at this point. I was a rising junior, and despite the scourge of the COVID-19 pandemic, those agonizing nostril straws, man, and the trials and tribulations of, of, of Zoom learning, I was finding my own. I was feeling perfect confident. I was striding my way through college, and striding along was just what I was doing this beautiful summer's day. I was deep within the recesses of my mind palace, letting my legs wander where they would when all of a sudden I stumbled across this seemingly innocuous stream here. And man, like a domino effect, like a domino effect, my mind was jolted out of its palace and into the realities that were. Man, it started to roll. What goes over streams? Bridges. What do I like to build? Bridges. And what have I yet to do in the past years? Build a bridge, not just any bridge, one that's top the bridge I built previously. You know, if I remember correctly, I had a meeting or something later that day, but I did not attend. Um, instead, I dashed my way home, went to my telephone, called my mom, said, Mom, I'm going to give you the rundown. If we put aside the matchstick structures, the yoga mat, blocking the kitchen door for a few months, would you mind sending me my connects in the mail? After a little bit of cajoling, 
She agreed, and a week later, what do I receive in the mail? A large box of connects just itching to be built with. It was go time, except this is when I encountered my first wall. I realized pretty quickly that uh, institutes of higher learning, as opulent as Furman is, is esteemed. They do not have a department of model bridges I could contact for permission to build over the stream. So I had to do some pondering. I, I, I thought to myself, well, the stream is on campus. Facilities takes care of campus. They're who I'm going to contact. So I sent an email to Furman Facilities. I, I told them about my hope, my dreams, my desires. I said, this may not make sense, but I promise you glorious results. Man, it's going to keep them guessing and coming back for more. About two days later, I received an email, and it, it, it simply read as follows. Um, well, until we can think of a reason why we won't allow you to build a bridge, parentheses, and we will, on parentheses, you're clear to go. <laughs> now, that's not a yes. Man, but it's also not a no. So, taking it as it would, I was living off campus at the time. It was the summer, and um, housing was closed. I dashed back to my residence, unpacked all my connects, and I got to building, and the fruits of my labor produced a bridge. Man, it was about 30 feet long. It was huge. It was wide. It was vast, and it was twice as big as the bridge I had built back home. And since it was twice as big, it meant it was twice as big as my minivan. I had no way to bring this back to campus. Another wall to bridge over. Now, I had to be strategic here. Um, in South Carolina, you have to be 21 to rent one of those little Home Depot trucks. Um, and I was 20 at the time. So I got to thinking, who owed me favors? Who, who, who can I buy dinner tonight? Who's nearby? And my friend Richard Rashid here came in clutch. He's something out of an HT, HGTV television show. He was born and built to transport things in trucks. And he was more than willing to drive over and help me move my bridge. So after we loaded it in, so ensued the single most stressful drive of my existence down the Poinsett Highway. <laughs> Man, I'm glad uh, South Carolina state troopers weren't out there that day. They would have had a story to tell that night. But nonetheless, we got the bridge down the Poinsett Highway, on the Furman Roundabout, over to the creek, unloaded it from the truck, and walked it right to the stream where I spiked it into the ground and basked in the euphoria I had built for myself. I had accomplished my goal. Man, the world was a golden path to my door now. This was zesty. And in my excitement, I forgot to think about Mother Nature. Man, after all, what do streams tend to do, especially in a rainy area like Greenville? They, they, they tend to flood. Um, and so excited was I by accomplishment, I, di I didn't take a moment to think logically that maybe this stream might want to flood one day, and maybe the four little connects that were spiking this in the ground won't, won't be enough to hold it in. And so two and a half months later, I get a call from a friend who goes, Isaiah, the wrath of Noah is here. The bridge is overflowing. I, I, I didn't even wait for, it, for them to finish. I dashed down to the stream. Man, it was too late. <laughs> Look at that. Disaster struck. It was like out of Armageddon. And that was the final picture of the first bridge I ever captured before. Uh-oh. Began to quake. Began to shake. And then it collapsed. Washing into the vast expanses of Furman Lake, I was devastated. I was angry. I was frustrated in myself. How could I have not seen this coming? I let my excitement get ahead of me, and I didn't think practically. I didn't do something I could have done to prevent this. Man. But then I realized, like I said before, I'm not one to give up. I tend to outdo myself. And if I just channel that frustration into determination to build back better, I suppose you could say, build, build, Build a better bridge next time. Build one that's stronger, that's floodproof, that defies the will of Mother Nature. Man, that would feel pretty great too. And so that's just what I did. When facing another wall, I bridged right over it, channeling my frustration into determination. But unfortunately, before determination could come, I would have to rescue the uh, remaining parts of my bridge from the Furman Lake here. Man, I never thought I'd become that intimately acquainted with this, this beautiful campus. But nonetheless, there I am. And after some wading about, squishing about in the mud, I retrieved as much of the bridge as I could. I threw that on my minivan here, drove it back to the stream, brought all my pieces back to the stream, and began to frustratingly, you can see I'm thrilled by this occurrence, I began to rebuild. And you know, despite my angers, despite my immense amounts of annoyance in myself, each piece I put onto my new bridge, I felt a little stronger, a little more confident in my vision, a little more, a little more excited about the prospects were to come. 
I was able to move on from my past mistakes and keep on moving. But ultimately, connects can only do so much against water. I realized I need to build a proper foundation for this bridge, and I had no idea how to do that. But I knew someone who did, Furman Facilities, from a few months earlier. Man, the same people, the same people who said they don't want me to build this bridge here, or they'd find a reason for me not to, they'd become quite fascinated with what I was doing these past few months. They'd drop by, give the old dad shake to make sure the bridges were sturdy. They'd become my biggest supporters. And suddenly, they were more than willing to teach me how to pour proper concrete foundations. So after a few tutorials and trials and error, I got to pouring. Man, I had to make the hajj to lows and back hundreds of times. But the fruits of my labor, once again, produced sweet eating. Look at this. My bridge grew and grew and grew until at long last, after floods and concrete dust, it was done. I had accomplished my goal. And man, my bridges were sturdy now. I, I, I challenged, I challenged the South Carolina winds and water to knock it down. Oh, and believe me, they tried. Windstorms, rain, a few more floods, and even the rare Carolina blizzard. Man, once again, I was riding high. I was, I was confident in my abilities. I thought I had beaten, beaten the mother nature. Nope. The bridges began to shriek and began to quake. And one night, I got a call from a friend. And he said, Isaiah, I just saw some people. They were playing tag down by your bridge, it looked like. Um, I might go check on it. They were running pretty fast and awfully close to those bridges. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tomfoolery is afoot. I had, I had planned for Mother Nature, but not human nature. And sure enough, I walked down to find that someone had smashed right into the bridge, and it was in smithereens. Pieces were in the lake, pieces were in the stream. Half the bridge was on the other side. I had to keep bouncing across as such to get there. It was a disaster, and once again, I was feeling that frustration. A wall, bigger than any wall I'd encountered before, had been erected in front of me. And once again, I had to either choose to not pass it, give up here, say, well, it was worth a try, but this is just too much of a frustration. It's not worth my time, or, Believe in myself, my passion, my dream, what I, what I enjoy doing, what fed my soul, and build a bridge over that wall. And once again, reconstruct my bridge better than it was before. <sighs> Took a few deep breaths, a few head shakes. What was it, around 1.41 a.m.? I figured I probably had a few hours till sunrise before anyone would notice, and I got to building. And man, I built and built and built and built, built all morning, all morning, all afternoon, man. Until eventually, at long last, the bridge was once again repaired as if nothing had ever happened. And so it stayed for over a year. I'd finally done it. I'd finally done it. Now the only thing I had to face here for my bridge were passers-by, the relentless onslaught of questions of curious passers-by. What have I built here? This is neat. This is wonderful. Hey, this reminds me of when I played Connects when I was a kid. It was glorious. But then there was another kind of passerby. The type of people who would go by and they would say, I wouldn't waste my time doing something like that unless I was getting paid or earning a grade. Why are you wasting your time? Man, this just seems like a lot of effort for just, just a toy. This, this doesn't make much sense to me. I don't, I don't get it. Pessimists. Yucky. Man. And once again, that feeling of frustration welled up in my stomach. Another wall to encounter. But I'd already finished this bridge. I didn't have a bridge to rebuild this time. I, I didn't know what to do. So why not build another one, I thought to myself. I'd show them. I'd show them. After all, I like to outdo my previous endeavors. I'd already finished this one. I'd given it plenty of intention. I had a few connects left over. And plus, I want to prove to these people just how serious I take my hopes and dreams and passions. I want to prove to them that if, 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 if you feel strongly about something, if something means enough to you, then it doesn't matter how much time or effort you put into it. All that matters is how, how, how it means to you. So that's just what I did. I, I went home and I walked back to where I build my bridges and I started to construct and construct and plan and design. I was going for a bridge that would knock them dead this time. Man, has anyone ever been to the state of Florida here around the Tampa Bay area? It's a, it's a place called the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Um, it, looked, it, it looks like a single gust of wind would knock it over, but stand steadfast and true it does. And I figured... If I'm going to make these pessimists, if I'm going to make them see my vision, I need to build a bridge that's pretty impressive. So that's just what I aim to do. And it took a few F times of designing, redesigning, re-engineering, refiguring. But ultimately, I got the bridge to stand. And then with some concreting foundation, there it was. I'd done it. Not to mention, this bridge was now clocking in about 35, 40 feet. I'd outdone my previous bridges. And that was that. 
You know, those same pessimists who used to come around, those same people who didn't quite understand my vision, they were now thrilled to see this new bridge. They finally understood. And I was just as excited because I had finally conquered my previous goal. My bridges were done. What more could I do? Man, and they looked great in the sunrise. They were beautiful. And I even put some lights on them to pre prevent humans from running into them at night. I'd done everything I possibly could to prevent disaster. What more was there left for me to do? I left the bridges standing for about a year and a half after that. I went on to other things, other interests, other endeavors. But I faced a new problem. Every now and then I'd go down to check on my bridges, see how they were doing. And every time I'd run into someone, and whoever they were, they'd always say, Isaiah, when, when, when are you going to build another bridge? Usually the same people who used to say, this is a waste of time, now they demanded more. I can't please anyone. What was I to do? Man. Well, clearly, as you'll probably can tell by now, I hate building bridges. And I, I didn't want to build, no, I'm just kidding. Of course I needed to build another one. <laughs> at, by this point, I was a senior in college. I had all sorts of other things going on. But I looked at my schedule, looked at things I could maybe be a little late to, looked at things maybe I could disappear a little early from, plotted and schemed, calculated. Man. And then after that night, I went to bed, and I started dreaming about bridges. And my, my practical plotting, that had all flown the wind by the next morning. I woke up determined to build the biggest, most insane, crazy, unreasonably large bridge I'd ever built. So that's just what I went doing. I had to order my connects overseas this time because I had so many to order. They came from England. So after they went on a ship, it took about two weeks for them to arrive here. But eventually I got a frustrated call from P2X saying, I said, hey, you have an enormous package here from overseas. Can you come get it? And I knew it was go time. Man, I brought my connects to my building place, unpacked them to face yet another small wall. This bridge was becoming so large that Mother Nature itself was claiming it as its own. Look at a bird built a nest on top of it. I couldn't touch this tower now. So I had to order more connects from overseas, wait another longer, wait for them to arrive here, build a whole other tower so I wouldn't bother the mother bird here with her eggs. And eventually, I did it. Man, my bridge was in pieces, but this latest construction was ready to go. Only for me to realize that this is called the main span. It's, it's the main part of the bridge. It was as long itself as the entirety of the first bridge. I was beginning to intimidate myself. But I kept building. I was optimistic. I was filled with joy and prospects. And oh boy, the first bridge, complete disaster. Couldn't even hold itself up. But I had something to work with here. Even though it was too heavy, it would, it would crumble and sag and go... <laughs> That was better than nothing. So I reinforced and re-engineered and rebuilt and asked for advice and looked on Google for how to build bridges, plotted and schemed, and I had a second bridge to show for it, and it fell over right away. <laughs> Another problem. But I replotted and re-engineered and re-schemed and re-shenaniganized this bridge. I reinforced where it needed to be. Shenaniganized isn't even a word. That's how excited I was. Man, and after all my efforts, after three months of constructing, I'd done it. Man, clocking in at 55 feet long and weighing over 300 pounds. 200 to 300 pounds. The latest swan song magnum opus connect bridge was done. And at this point, I've been so excited and so disappointed so many times. I was becoming one of the pessimists myself because I realized, how am I going to move a 55-foot bridge down to the lake? Facilities. <laughs> Man, throughout all my bridging endeavors, I'd begun to talk to people, make friends. My friends would come and watch me build bridges. I made friends on Furman's campus. I made friends outside of Furman's campus. And everyone seemed to be attracted. They loved the bridges. They loved its unique idea. And they loved that I had the will to make it happen. There was no real purpose or reason to it, except that I loved to do it. And that's why it happened. And some of those people loved the bridges more than others. And those are the people I called one night and said, hey, are you free later this week? Particularly very early in the morning when the roads are very, very sparsely trafficked. And a few people said yes. And so, after getting a final gaze at my bridge, at what I had done, being pessimistic that I probably wouldn't make it, man, looked at it longingly. At Odon 100 one Monday morning, a group of five friends and I gathered, rubbing the sleep out of our eyes in the bridge shed and figured out the best way to move this down to the stream. Now, fortunately, we had our friend Madigan here to uh, help us get the job done. She's an ROTC, so she'd been up for hours at this point. 
And she also knows how to drill. All the Army does, their job is to build bridges. So they were ready to go. So with her guidance and all my friends' help, we carried the bridge, and we started to walk down Furman's barren streets. Man, and we walked, and uh-oh, the bridge was starting to creak and groan. And as you can see here, it started to warp in the middle, and oh, no, it started to shake and quake, and nothing happened. We made it down to the lake. Man, that was a frightening trek, but here we are. But now the next challenge, we have to get it over the stream. Will we be able to do it? I don't know. To do that, I had to hop in the stream, but at this point, I had ruined so many pairs of blue jeans by walking in that, that room. It didn't matter to me. I just wanted to get this job done. And so, in the icy waters of the Furman stream, I walked with my bridge. But uh-oh, I heard a crack, and I turned around to see pieces were coming apart in the middle. Once again, the bridge was warping. Oh, no, it's starting to shake. What will happen? It made it across. I couldn't believe it. Disaster had yet to strike. The final challenge, can we place it on its concrete foundations? I don't know. We had people in the water, people on either side of the bridge. All our breaths were holding. We didn't know what would happen, and all of a sudden, one of my friends, they had to sneeze. They went, achoo! And when they sneezed, they dropped the bridge, and it went crashing down a few inches, and I heard snaps, and I heard the bridge groan. Oh, no, it's starting to shake. Something's going to happen. And that was that. It didn't break. Nothing happened. We had done it. We had put the final bridge in place with no disaster to speak of. Man, I was thrilled. And there it is today. I had accomplished my goal at long last. I had proven to the naysayers and to myself that no matter what walls I encountered, there's always a way to bridge around them and bring others and get them involved as well. And this bridge looks spectacular for my efforts. Man, it was so big it even made it on Google Maps there. <laughs> so if you ever need to get to Furman, but none of the case, you can still find both of my bridges down by the dining hall on a derelict little stream to this very day. They sit tranquilly, idly, steadfast and true. Man, they sit there as a testament to that. Whatever your hope and dream may be, whatever your passion and desire, no matter what floods head their way, no matter what humans try to stop them, no matter how many people don't understand, don't believe, or maybe are just straight up confused about your passion, hope and dream, Man, at the end of the day, all those things are just walls. And all walls can be bridged with enough effort and work. So next time you go out to build a bridge of your very own, whatever it may be, remember that you're not going to just have to build one. You're going to have to build many to circumference those walls. But dude, at the end of, at the, end of the day, the, the fruits of your labor will be very zesty right there. And that's that.